Everybody, I guess we'll get started. And so we'll start in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Um, today we enter into the third Sunday of the Holy 50 Days, where we reflect on the Gospel of John, chapter 4, uh, which is the majority of the chapter, but not the entire chapter of John, chapter 4. And we reflect on um, our Lord saying that he is the, the living water. And um, just to give you the chart that was presented last week, and we remember the theme of the Holy 50 Days <clears throat> is to um, reflect on um, the heavenly life, right? And we remember that our goal is to be lifted up with him. And during these days, our Lord spoke to uh, about the, the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And this is reflected in Acts chapter 1, if you wanted to do a little bit of a study. And so we reflect on the various I am statements of our Lord during this time, which gives us and points us to the characteristics of the kingdom of heaven. And, and so today, our Lord meets a Samaritan woman at the well. Um, and I think she represents uh, a lot of people today. You know, those people who are thirsting, those people who are looking and seeking after the truth. Uh, but I think she also represents those of us who are, who are very confused, right? Um, she's lost and she's confused, just as many are in the, in the world today. She's had five husbands, and the man that she lives with now is not her husband. And, and so, you know, she was coming to the well in today's gospel um, to meet the needs of this world, right? Um, she wanted the water to nourish the body. And we see how with this exchange with Christ, you know, sometimes we, we reflect on how do we experience the resurrection in our own lives? And I think this is a good example. We see how the Samaritan woman in today's gospel truly experienced the resurrection and what it, and she applied it to her life. Her life went from a trans, it was completely transformed. She went from a worldly and carnal an empty life to one that's filled with holiness, purity, and salvation. And so <clears throat> she represents humanity who is thirsting and seeking uh, something to satisfy that thirst, right? So on some level, she represents this endless human quest to go to the well, any well, right? Uh, to draw from some water, right, in quotes, um, that will sustain our search and quench our thirst for something more in this life. And the choices are endless and they're attractive, right? And sometimes in our spiritual confusion, we go from well to well, drinking from this water or from that water, but we always end up not satisfied, right? We always end up with this unquenchable thirst if we're not seeking from a source that truly can satisfy. And so <clears throat> the question that we have to think about is even though we are believing and practicing Orthodox Christians, do we sometimes give in to this temptation of trying to quench our own thirst at wells other than the well of the gospel and the Eucharist, right? Do we believe that, for example, if we travel enough, if we spend enough money, if we accumulate enough things, that we can fool ourselves into thinking that our, our quench will be, uh, our, our thirst will be quenched? Um, right? We, we, we contemplate on these kind of things. We think, you know, why drink from the, the living waters of the Gospels when we can drink of something that's playing on Netflix? Why drink and observe, or why fast, why observe a fast of the church when we can eat and drink to our heart's content, right? Why drink from the difficult teachings of Christ, you know, for example, in the Sermon on the Mount, when we can easily be captivated by the latest posting on social media, you know? <clears throat> and so our Lord says to the Samaritan woman today, give me a drink. And I think he's saying it to each one of us, right? He says, give me a drink 
because according to St. Augustine, as he reflects on this verse, our Lord says this because he thirsts for her faith. And he's thirsting for each one of our faith as well. And so the question really becomes, where do we draw our water from? This is the problem with sin, right? We want it our way, not God's way. Even though we pray thy will be done, we really want to pray my will be done. And then we wonder why um, we're not fulfilled. And we wonder why we're, not, we're, we're feeling stuck, right? We're feeling why... Uh, we become so reliant on all these temporary things that help us escape. But they have no way in satisfying our thirst for God, right? And our, go- and our growing in that knowledge and our love for Him. Our, our Lord reminds us that the way is narrow that leads to life, and few are those who find it. So where are we drawing our water from? And our Lord answered her and said in verse 13 of the Gospel of John, chapter 4, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. So our Lord proclaims freedom to her, not escape, right? The world offers escape, but our Lord offers freedom right? A transfiguration, a transformation, redemption. And desiring this water, desiring true life, eternal life, she repents. She completely transforms. um, And she finds him who is life itself, right? All her deeds are exposed. There's nothing that's concealed. She doesn't walk in shame anymore. or She doesn't walk in darkness anymore. Uh, because now she has found uh, the true joy and freedom of life that God uh, offers through repentance. And she says, sir, give me this water. Right? Can we not identify with this woman? Right? Are we not also looking for the fountain of eternal life? Do we not seek and search for it in worldly materialistic ways? You know? How often do we dive into the waters of this world seeking eternal life in money? You know, seeking eternal life in possessions and things and pleasure, and entertainment and fame and power, right? And control. Does our Lord just give her this water? Does he just hand it to her? No. It's not like, it's not like a bottled water that you find at a convenience store, right? You can't just go and buy the living water of the Holy Spirit. You can't do it. No, something more is required. And that something is the cleansing and the purification of our sin, right? It's repentance. In American society, we put a lot of emphasis on keeping things clean, which is good, right? Uh, We wash everything. And especially nowadays, we wash it, you know, even more so, I I would argue. We wash our clothes. We wash our dishes. We wash our hands. We wash our bodies. We even wash our water right? Um, I'm guilty of this. I notice when water is not purified, I can taste the difference. But, and this is good to a point, but the question that I want to pose for all of us to reflect on is, do I give as much attention to the cleansing and the purification of my soul from sin as I do for my body from germs? You know, when our Lord reveals his knowledge about the, uh, the Samaritan woman's past and her, her different marriages and her current relationship, he is pointing out that before she can drink of the living water, she must repent. She must change her current lifestyle, right? You can't have one foot in the door of the world and one foot in the church. It doesn't work like that. You can't, be, you can't have that split soul. You know, you have to completely change and repent from your, from your lifestyle. And we see how she did it. She left her water pot. You know, why? It's like what St. Augustine reflects. He says, the living water of Christ satisfies our spiritual thirst as the pleasures of this world never will. She realizes that she has to stop doing her bad actions. It's for each one of us to remember too. We have to leave our water pots, right? The Christian lives a resurrected life a new life, a different life. 
um, a holy life, right? Everyone has to struggle against sin. No one is exempt from this struggle except those who are in paradise. So the question is, what is your water pot? I want each person to think about this. What is it that um, we should pick and rid ourselves from, from this next month, right? Or this next period of our, of our time, right? Is it lying? And it doesn't, you know, this is not age specific. Is our water pot lying? Do we have to stop lying? Sometimes we're so good at it, but we're so used to it that we don't even see it as a problem. You know, some people do it and they don't even realize why they lie. So is your water pot anger? Especially during these times when the stress levels are high and um, patience is very low. I, I hope it's the other way around, right? But is it anger? That's our water pot. You know, we can't always justify our anger. We can't always live this way. Is, it, is our water pot um, the language that we speak, the way we speak? It doesn't become us, right? Imagine one of the saints using bad language. How could you think of that, right? It, it shouldn't be part of our vocabulary. Is our water pot hatred? Are we, so whatever your water pot is, I, I, I want this gospel to be a reflection on the idea of, of escaping or walking away from your water pot, leave it, right? Have that complete transformation. And we see how, how she reacts. She says, come, see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? You know, she also brings her people to the knowledge and the love of God so that they too can find healing and salvation through repentance. You know, uh, it's, it's said that she becomes one of the greatest evangelists of the church. She helps other people find the same living water that she found. And so she went, if we reflect from the beginning of the story, she goes to the well at noon because of her shame, right? When nobody would be there. It's the hottest point of the day. So nobody goes to the well to draw water at the hottest point of the day at noontime. But she goes because she wants to avoid people. She, does, she wants to avoid um, talk and, and these kind of things. And the Lord spoke to her about the living water that cleanses away all shame. And then her heart was so affected. It was so changed that she didn't care about her shame anymore. And she went to her own people and told them about the Messiah. A conversation of what, an hour? I don't know. But it, it completely transformed her life. There was no longer any shame, but hope and joy and understanding. There was a complete transformation. And this is what the gospel offers each one of us. This is what our Lord can do to each one of us. It's a wonderful thing to have our shame taken away by the living water. This is through confession, right? And we see some of the blessings that come. We see a transformed life. There is no you know, temporary or shortcut solutions to the problem of our egos and the problem of our pride and our, and our struggles with sin. There's no shortcuts, right? God offers us not a way of escape, not a way of pretending that these problems don't exist, but not a way of positive thinking, right? No, he offers us the opportunity to grow and the opportunity to heal and, the, and to overcome our, our struggles and to be embraced by the reality of who he is and who we're called to be. This is the transformed life, the transfigured life, right? We see the blessings and the power of repentance. The Samaritan woman, she was an adulterer and a, and, a, and a person who lived an immoral life having five husbands and the one she lives with is not her husband. And she repents and she preaches Christ to her own people. You know, repentance <clears throat> results in freedom from slavery of sin. And the Samaritan woman demonstrates her freedom by eagerly telling people about Christ as if she was just freed from jail and she's proclaiming to the world, you know? So we see the blessings of the love of Christ. The way that our Lord deals with this woman was critical in her repentance and a lesson for each one of us. He's patient. He doesn't condemn. He doesn't accuse. He doesn't point the finger. No, he uplifts. He encourages. You know, our Lord 
Jesus was a Jew, and Jews had no dealings with the Samaritans. And our Lord shows us that he is here to break the barriers of communication in order to win our hearts. It is Jesus who initiates the conversation and a relationship with him, right? And you notice how he slowly reveals himself to those who are ready and those who are, ex who are um, able to accept him. He doesn't tell the Samaritan woman that he is Christ until she is spiritually ready, right? And he gradually builds up to it, educating her in his, in his loving way until she's prepared to accept him as Christ. And so, just some things to reflect on from today's gospel. <clears throat> there are numerous false gospels, right? There is different um, philosophies. There is different beliefs. There's different pseudo-religions and spiritualities that are out there. And they exist in this world, and they claim to have the living water, but they don't, right? And for whatever reason in moments of weakness, maybe. We turn to them, but they cannot quench our thirst for the one true God. They even attempt to pervert our understanding and our experience of our own faith by teaching us that we can be spiritual without being religious. Don't be fooled, right? These are cheap imitations and fancy brand name bottles, and they have no way they have the true living water of the Holy Spirit that gives eternal life. And so I leave you with this question. What are you thirsting for? What is your water pot? Right? Is there anything that's holding you back from our Lord Jesus Christ? Is there anything that's holding you back from true enlightenment? Right? From the fullness of life that Christ offers and that he, he asks us to receive. What struggle with sin are we facing? Is it anger? Is it lust? Is it pride? Is it ego? Whatever it is standing in your way, leave the water pot. Nothing is too great for God, right? Each one of us is given the opportunity today to follow in, this, in the footsteps of this great saint, of this Samaritan woman. She stepped out from the shadows, out from darkness, and she embraced the spiritual rebirth of life in Christ. So we pray that with her, we too can thirst for Christ and drink from the water that Christ offers, which is his way, his will, right? The water that springs up from inside us to healing and eternal life. Christ is risen, truly he is risen, and glory be to God forever, amen.